Welcome to episode 5, the final episode of our May Pacific Cruise with P&O. In this episode we take a further look into the facilities of the Pacific Dawn. Compared with the Pacific Dawn, the Titanic wasn't so Titanic, and both ships carried a similar number of passengers, about 2,000, but the Pacific Dawn has a gross tonnage of 70,000 compared with the Titanic's displacement of 52,000 tonnes. Its 245 metre length is impressive, especially if you have to walk from our cabin at the front of the ship to Simon's cabin at the back of the ship several times a day. On sea days, the ship's many entertainment systems kick into overdrive. The theatre hosts dances, movies, stand-up comedy, musicals, bingo, to name just a few. But being the boring person that I am, I never attend any of these. I do enjoy, however, sneaking a look at the ship's operational areas, like the battery room, sewage disposal, and so on. On the other hand, Lillian attended the cooking classes run by Mike, the entertainment director, and the ship's head chef. On an average 10-day cruise, 2,900 kilograms of flour, 9,600 litres of milk, 110 kilograms of coffee beans, 2,200 kilograms of rice are consumed. On top of that, the plate brigade washed 32,000 plates, 13,000 glasses and 30,000 cutlery items each day. Lillian also attended a Lose 5kg in two weeks seminar, which is ironic because those that need to attend it, like me, don't. And shut that down? No. Oh, no, I'm having that little really press mechanism. After four sea cruises, I've finally come to realise why we go on these. It's the food and drink, tons of it, and good stuff too. Both of us are workaholics and it's the only way we can force ourselves out of the work zone. After eight days of this, I'm just absolutely itching to get back to work. Dress up parties are a big thing on cruises, but again, they're not within my comfort zone. By day, the dome at the front of the ship offers 180 degree views and is a great spot to read a book and enjoy a quiet coffee or drink. After hours, the dance floor and bar area come alive with all the latest and greatest hits. As you'd expect, we never went to the dome. The Orient Bar was the scene of much activity, including karaoke, and again, we gave that a pass. And that's where cruise lines like P&O are so good, and utilising almost none of the ship's amenities and features, even people like us still enjoy the cruise experience. We chatted with this couple who were first time cruisers, and celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. They're from Childers, but now living in Brisbane. On the final night of our cruise, as we sailed into the sunset, It was decided to have a farewell family dinner with our newfound friends and family, a gathering of about 40 people. The menu was extensive, as were the meals and the blonde jokes. The ship's entertainment director came by to wish us well, and so did Keegan and Stephanie, who were married on this cruise. It was a great evening, and I could imagine the first time cruisers in the group could be persuaded to cruise again. The next morning after breakfast, we disembarked at 8.30am, but quickly regrouped for morning tea at Portside Wharf. Next we went to Tumeside Mall so that we could have lunch, and for Lillian to pick up some supplies. <laughs> 